Today on Vintage Space, on location from my very loud hotel room in San Francisco, we are going to be discussing the $730 million question, is Pluto a planet? So the question over Pluto's planetary status is definitely in a lot of people's minds right now because less than two weeks ago, the New Horizons spacecraft made a successful flyby of Pluto. The images the spacecraft has sent back so far are absolutely stunning, but more than that, they're revealing that the world is far more complex than anybody really anticipated. Not only is there a really fascinating variety of features on Pluto's surface that we're seeing, it looks younger than scientists anticipated, meaning something or some processes have been resurfacing Pluto's face over the years. Granted, we're talking on a 100 million year timescale here, not decades. So rather than discussing Pluto's status on its own, I think it's really interesting to actually look at its comparisons with other bodies in the solar system. And a great place to start is Neptune's moon Triton. We've only seen Triton once. The Voyager 2 spacecraft flew by Neptune and its moons in 1989 as part of its extended mission. Both Pluto and Triton are likely composed primarily of water ice over a rocky core. Both are slightly smaller than our own moon. These bodies both have outer layers featuring some amount of non-water ice, like methane, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen. These gases are also present in the surfaces of both bodies. In both cases, the atmosphere is thought to be replenished by sublimation of this surface ice. Both surfaces look relatively young, just a few million years old, meaning both are being resurfaced by some process. And for both bodies, their atmospheres are quite rare, but they do have strong winds. There's also the link that Triton and Pluto might have come from similar places. There are some dynamic models of the solar system that suggest that both Pluto and Triton, along with a host of other Kuiper Belt objects, actually began life, meaning they were formed much closer closer to the sun than they currently lie. In this model, the gas giants and the ice giants were also orbiting much closer to the sun, and their gravity being so close together actually threw the system into chaos. The larger planets were shoved outwards, and some of them grabbed smaller bodies on the way with them. That's how Neptune is thought to have captured Triton as one of its moons, and how Pluto has ended up in an orbital resonance with Neptune. So, Pluto and Triton are two similar bodies that were both punted out from where they started life and have been locked into their current orbits by Neptune. But one is a moon and one hosts a bunch of moons, and Pluto's moons are another interesting point to consider. Pluto has five known moons, one of which, Charon, is massive compared to its host body. Charon is actually half the size of Pluto. A planet hosting a number of moons is not exactly rare in our solar system. Just look at all of Jupiter's moons. Of the inner terrestrial planets, only Mars has more than one moon, the irregularly shaped Phobos and Deimos. The Earth, as we know, only has one moon, and as I discussed in this episode of Pluto in a Minute, there are some really interesting comparisons between the Earth moon system and the pluto Charon system. The other two inner planets, being Mercury and Venus, have no moons. So consider that Pluto has five moons, while some of the terrestrial planets have no moons. There's also the simple fact that Pluto has very planet-like qualities. It has an atmosphere. That atmosphere has winds. It has been active in its lifetime. And the images from New Horizons are showing mountains on Pluto. If you were in a spacecraft and you were to see that out the window, would you think it was a planet or not? And Pluto isn't alone in having planet-like attributes despite not being one of the classical planets. Just look at Saturn's moon Titan. It has a substantial atmosphere as well as ethane and methane lakes on the surface. It's got mountains. It's got features that look very planet-like. And what about Jupiter's moon Io that features active volcanoes? And what about Europa that we know has subsurface oceans beneath a thick layer of ice? There are a lot of bodies in the solar system that, were they not in their current orbits, were they in their own orbits around the sun, would definitely be considered planets. But we don't consider them planets, but we still study them. You could also call Pluto a Kuiper Belt object, which many people have. But if the definition is that a Kuiper Belt object is just an object residing in the Kuiper Belt, wouldn't that make New Horizons a KBO as well? So, does that answer the question? I really hope not. I really just hope it got you guys thinking a little bit more about what's a planet and what we should be studying in the solar system. But I still want to know, what is your take on Pluto's planetary status? Let me know in the comments below, and if you have any questions, ideas, further thoughts on this topic, definitely leave those as well. And of course, if you've got ideas for future episodes and general questions about vintage space type stuff, leave those below as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for vintage space content every single day of the week, and with new episodes going up every single Tuesday and Friday, hopefully not many more from Loud Hotel Rooms, definitely subscribe so you never miss an episode.